Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Andy Brailsford. I'm Principal Lecturer in Advancing Practice at Sheffield Hallam University. I'm no super team through being an educator on the generic instructor course, which is an opportunity where everybody is expecting feedback. So today we're going to have a little bit of a look at feedback together. And I hope that today we've heard quite a lot about consultants, about juniors, about trainees. I'd just like to expand that a little bit further and think about feedback as being an interaction between two people or an interaction between somebody and a group. But about feedback being slightly wider than, than just the consultant to the trainee. Let's think about every interaction and every interaction counting in what we do. Now, the sessions um, for a group of people interested in medical education, you're very quiet. Is that fair to say? Yes. Normally people interested in medical education really like to talk and I'm hoping to try and draw that out of you knowing I've got the graveyard slot not fitting far between Paul on the agenda. Yes, so, so that is fair. Now we've got two people in the room you need to be aware of. We've got Michael at the back, there's a wave, Michael. See Michael there? And we've got uh, Suzanne at the front, there's a wave, Suzanne. Okay, so as we're talking about feedback, as the conversation uh, transpires, if there's anything you want to ask or if there's anything you want to put as a feedback <coughs> statement, a feedback problem, something to add to the conversation, please do pick your hand up and someone will come to you with a robot mic. Or alternatively, if you don't want to verbalise that, write it. You've all got pens and paper. Write it in quite large writing in case anyone's not brought the step specs. Put your hand up and hand it to whoever's got the robot mic. Okay? <coughs> okay, so I'd like you just for a minute with the people at either side of you, just reflect on feedback. Reflect on feedback you've had. So think about feedback that motivated you, that inspired you. Think about feedback that didn't. And I'll come back to you in two minutes. So when you part of the side, just think about feedback for a second. And let's have a little bit of a think about the feedback that we're talking about. So roping my people, now's your time to keep your baby steps counters. So show of hands to someone who's willing to share with us some interesting story from their day. No, nobody had anything to say. Fantastic, thank you. Um, just to say that it seems that a lot of feedback that you receive is often in the format, yeah, that was all right. It's like, oh, fantastic, I'm not an idiot, I'm competent. But there's very little I can take away from that to learn or get better at anything. Yeah. So you've received a judgment on something, mm. but know what we call, or I would call, be forward. Nothing to take and either say, yeah, that was good, well, well how do I make it better? Why wasn't it great? Why was it excellent? Why was it all right? That's a dodgy word, isn't it? All right, when it comes to feedback. If you went on a date and somebody fed back to you <laughs> that that was all right, you wouldn't think that that had gone very well. <laughs> no! <laughs> of things there to think about. How could we unpick? For those of you who went to the coaching session earlier, it was talking about asking questions and that. From what you said there, that was a very one way amount of feedback. Somebody else then, another example. Yes. Um, I don't know. So, um, I had very little, uh, I moved to a new deanery when I started emergency medicine. Uh, in an unspecified deanery in, in the west of West Midlands, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I just arrived. I was very new, and I, because of Antas, I'd done a few other jobs before I came in to, to do this post. And um, my supervisor ignored me pretty much the whole time, and only met with me once, which was in a, a um, corridor of passing as they were leaving early from their shift. And they said that there were two reasons why people make very bad emergency medicine doctors. One is that they don't know enough, and one is that they're lazy. And that I seem to know enough, and um, I didn't seem lazy. So there was a third that they weren't aware of. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then he walked off uh, and drove home and signed my form remotely. And I didn't really know So uh, I suppose 
I stood, stood there and it took me a long time to even to decipher what he was saying, um, because I didn't really understand it. And um, it ties in very much with what we were talking about earlier about feedback. And I realized that not everything that was dripping into my ears was gold. <laughs> And in fact, this might not be useful for me. I didn't have to listen to it. Um, and it, it, was, it was very formative, actually. But probably not feedback I've used since. So you learned how not to feedback? Uh, well, uh, yes, certainly. I learned that you didn't necessarily have to pay attention to everyone's feedback. Okay, okay. Interesting. The who and the, and the do we. And we'll come to that. So the feedback there was given in a very strange format, whether there was a model or a style involved, I'm not quite sure. But we have the example of feedback given when the receiver of that communication really has no idea what that means, what to do with it. If there is feed forward, and more to the point, if it's on their performance, actually what their performance is doing right now. So thinking about the use of any feedback transaction that we give. Gentlemen at the back. So flat me kind of lady because and Merseyside. When I was a medical student, I met a young lady who was rather posh. And I went to her house and had a thought a very posh place. Is this safe um, conversation to have? Her was very, very posh, directors of companies. And afterwards, after the weekend of spending time in that house, I asked my girlfriend at the time what her parents thought of me. And they said, well, he was very basic. <laughs> now I learned that actually the best thing about feedback is to take the positives. And being a northern, I think that's a Definitely. So we, we, we're nice to know that you're, you're basic. Also, from being slightly further north than Birmingham, would absolutely take that as a compliment too. But at least you were in high maintenance. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so thinking that, there's a few things. One more. Okay, one more. The gentleman here, Matthew, is that okay? Um, prior to the ARCD, I had to declare a serious incident or in, involvement in the serious incident, being a trainee. And when I got to my ARCD, when we were discussing the serious incident, the consultant on the panel said to me, if you're not generating errors, you're not seeing enough patients. Um, and he said it in quite a positive light, which I took away and it didn't make me feel better at the time. I think there were pros and cons to that. Um, I guess it did underline to me that there Mercy medicine is an aerogenic specialty and there are lots of ways in which one and teams do generate errors, some of which we need to take great care to try and prevent, some of which we need to learn from, etc. But there were some negative consequences to that as well because it can make you be defensive when it comes to looking at errors, much like Chris highlighted already. Thank you. The things that you've just said, so your major incident reporting, where you are in your career, your future one. <laughs> they say, they're quite high stakes, aren't they? Quite significant points. I was expecting somebody to tell me feedback about whether they learnt to bend dance or something like that, but no, you've gone for quite high stakes examples. <laughs> Am I about to get to the next stage of my career? Have I passed this element that means I can? How am I doing whilst looking after the really critically sick? How am I doing in, as a healthcare professional? And we've had some very strange bits of feedback to that. And I'm not sure any of us understood much around the four examples that were given in terms of what would you do with that? What would you do with that feedback to take it, it be meaningful, and move on and support yourself and your peers with that in future work? I think that's quite, that's quite concerning with the stakes. There's, there's something around this thing called the, the, the um, learning zone and the reflective zone. And this was alluded to in Chris's presentation with the cup of coffee. Yeah? <coughs> When we are um, learning, so when we're learning to do something, it takes uh, time. It takes absolute concentration, and we're often seeking feedback on that. And my goodness, we are often quite slow. Yes. So to really, really uh, be um, learning thoroughly, we 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 take time. 
And we're not very productive when we're slow. How many patients are you seeing? You're not seeing enough patients because you're not making enough mistakes, as the gentleman in the middle said. That really signifies I'm learning, I'm going through all these different algorithms in my head that you've presented me with, but actually I'm quite precise because I am very, very prudently following everything. I lecture in an academic setting and often get, in the real world, in clinical practice, I wouldn't check the whole of the patient, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know? and, and why wouldn't you? Well, I wouldn't because I'd have sight. You're showing me a doll, a plastic doll that depends on whatever you say, this plastic doll now is taking its last breath. Still a plastic doll, isn't it? <laughs> So they tell me that they would have sight of something, they'd have smell, they'd have that sensation, that sixth sense, that intuition, and would be able to make rapid decisions. And we can make rapid decisions, and we can really, really function, and when we're functioning in that rapid decision making, my God, we are productive. Yet when we are productive, we are more likely to make error. You see where I'm coming from there? Yeah? So your, your, your piece of feedback there, quite inf informative. Do you want feedback? Do you want feedback? Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Students currently ask if they want feedback. When I say students, I'm talking across the board. Generation Z. Have we heard of Generation Z? Yes. Within nursing and midwifery, um, the West Midlands produced a really interesting document through Health and Education England called Mind the Gap Generation Z. And it looks at things around the staffing um, of nursing and midwifery based on the millennials and what previous generations X, Y and Z required and wanted from a, a job. With the transient workforce that we've currently got, and my goodness, Generation Z want feedback. They want feedback and they want to know how they get on. When we evaluate we find that people don't get feedback as often as they like it. <coughs> Can I ask if that's how you feel in your jobs? Do you get feedback really regularly? Does anyone get feedback really regularly? Okay, no one's jumping up and down and going, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah? But do you want feedback really regularly? Do you give feedback really regularly to other people? And when I say other people, I couldn't be in the training but I could also mean the person that's providing the tea. Yeah? Do you give feedback? Now, we talked earlier about things taking longer when we're giving communications, and you need to pick the ones that you do. But, it, but I'm not necessarily talking about hugely <coughs> lengthy discussions. Just feedback. Do we give feedback? Research would show that people who are in a position to be giving feedback, particularly developmental feedback to people that may well be learning a job within healthcare, think they give it far more often than they do. Can I just ask you to reflect on that a minute? Just think about the people that you're supervisory of. Do you, do you give them, how often do you give them feedback? How do they feel about that? Do they feel they're getting feedback often enough? Really, really useful question for you to consider asking people. If we think about the person who is giving feedback, and, and just words you can shout out, what qualities do you want in that person that's giving feedback? Credibility. 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 You know they could do it. So whatever they're giving you feedback on, you know they could do it. Honest. Honest. Who said honest? Give me one in. You want someone to give you honest feedback. What they honestly saw, not just tell you what they want, you think you want to hear. Yes. Time appropriate. Time appropriate. And, and there are all sorts of models of feedback. And despite which one you're using for which situation, time appropriate is crucial and damn difficult in emergency care. You know when you want to give it. But is there that opportunity? Because we can't just take a time out while the patient waits. Yeah? But definitely, time appropriate is key. Yes? Sorry? Kind. Kind. So you want that person to be kind. Despite what they've got to tell you, we want to see some sort of empathy. I was been making notes, furious notes all day, 
And some of the things I make notes on are words I am hearing a lot. And a word I have heard a lot, not just in presentations, but in discussions, is the word fatigue. And that's been a suffix to several prefixes. So I've heard compassion fatigue. What else have I heard? Decision fatigue. Yeah? I'm hearing fatigue a lot. We know that we are fatigued, yet we're wanting to be kind and to be able to give feedback in a timely manner. And they just want to go up. Yes? But, but definitely, somebody who is kind in the way they give feedback. The kindest person can tell anybody anything. Yeah? We look for qualities in people. There are people you know you would take anything from, and they are often credible. They are honest. They are kind. Anything else you want in that person to give you feedback? Specific. Specific. Specific, so exactly what you have done. Give you something tangible to work with. Um, as somebody who marks assignments, I see a lot of people who've had their assignments marked who go, and I don't know what that means. And they've got a whole page of feedback, but I don't know what that means. And when you go through, it talks about the critical analysis and the this and the that and the thought process into that and the identification. But is it specific? Does it actually say what you didn't do is do this? What you need to do is do that. Have you been specific? This is what we saw. This is what we want to talk about. Very specific feedback. Could you take feedback? Better or worse from somebody who has never made a mistake in their whole life? <laughs> Mr. Perfect, who always gets 10 out of 10 on the MCQ. How do you take feedback? Worse. worse. Okay. And we're looking for that honesty in the person. <coughs> and somebody who, who does have, you, know, you don't need to be perfect. To be giving feedback. Feedback doesn't need to be from somebody who's been put on a pedestal. It can be from someone who has made mistakes too, who has seen other experiences, who has struggled and had these experiential learning to be able to share and move you forward. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There are some really difficult situations to give feedback in. Can anyone think of any that we could talk about? I have lots. Do we have any suggestions from the room? Difficult feedback situations. This you know, like So someone that, that manages you but that you know, that you're friends with. Giving feedback to a friend or colleague, that is tough. Yes? And there'll be people wherever you work that somebody needs to speak to them. And it might just be something small, or I say small, it may just be something individualised. So-and-so is always late. Always late. And we need to think about tackling that. How would you tackle somebody always being late? How would you tackle that feedback? Explore if there's uh, something going on. Explore so, if there's something going on. Okay. For example, like, I overslept on a night to, th to go in to start nights as an F2. And my wrench, as soon as I got in, checked, was I alright? And I did the typical, yeah, I'm fine, but actually my mum was dying and turned me ill. Okay. So that can really work its thoughts, I think. Okay. So explore, because I was out drinking last night, is a massively different scenario to that. Or I hate it here and I can't be bothered, is a massively different scenario. And if we don't know why, then we don't know what we should do about that and we could do something massively different with that. In, um, we talked about, so, so a lot of my experiences within the generic instructor courses and we advocate there's something called advocacy with inquiry. So I'll say what it says on the tin and ask them why. So you were late again this morning. Is there any reason for that? So be really clear, really clear. You were late this morning. Any reason for that? I'm going to go down a very different angle with a rationale like that than I am, well actually, my bus comes in at five past the hour, yeah? You see where I'm coming from? If you jump to conclusions, which are very, very easy to do, you can make huge mistakes. One of the most drastic ones 
um, that, that, that I ever looked after was a mentor who rung me, uh, mentoring a, a student nurse about to qualify in the last six months. And the mentor rang me and said, she's never here. It's driving us mad. She's absolutely never here. And um, we've asked her, and she says she just can't get to the bus in time. She's tried everything. So I went to see the student nurse and said, your mentors are complaining that you're really not. <coughs> and to be honest, they feel they've tried everything and they're stuck with what to do. If you're late the minute you're qualified, who's going to pick up that work? How come you're late? And when we had, um, she said, she, she very defensively, very defensively said, well, I just can't get to the bus in time. I just can't get to it. Why? Why what? How are you trying to get to the bus? What's, what's influencing that? It turned out that this young lady's mum had died and she was now caring with her dad for a six-year-old brother and couldn't fit in all the childcare arrangements and anything else, but didn't feel she could tell anybody that. And nobody had actually asked her why she was late. They just said, get an earlier bus. Does that make sense? If I get this wrong, will report me, I'll qualify later, this is going to hurt me financially, I know I can't look after the family. Yes? So everybody else's mind is working at 100 miles an hour, and when you're working at 100 miles an hour, you're not being thoughtful, you're not being productive. So, every, so the, the recipient of that feedback, because not given the chance to explore, was making a massive decision about what to do. <coughs> I would say that if you're giving feedback within um, a, a, a trainee environment particularly, there's certain qualities that you need to have. Yes, you need to be authentic. Yes, you need to be credible. But you also need to have a certain amount of knowledge. You need to know about whatever it is that they're doing, the simple thing. But you also need to know about the... I hate, as, a, as, as an academic, to use the word curriculum, but you need to know where they are in their training and have they likely to have come across something like this before? Can they piece it with that? Have they done this other system that's massively affecting what they're doing now? Does that make sense? So you need to know, and I'm sure many of you will have been judged on that beforehand. There's lots and lots of quotes around, particularly medical education, sarcasm and humour getting people to study harder. Yes? Okay, other difficult feedback comments. <coughs> difficult feedback situations, lady at the back. Okay. Um, so, for example, like you said to someone, um, people have been complaining that you're always short with the nurses, or maybe they're just class of personality. And that's just them. Yeah. That's just them. Yes. We've all met the person that's got, that people have got a million and one excuses for. Don't worry about them, they're always like that. But the question for me is what effect is that then having on the team? And then therefore the team's ability to look after that group. How would you go about that then? How are we going to go about telling somebody who is always like that? How are we going to go about addressing their personality? Can we recreate somebody's personality? Yeah, yeah, ideally away from the situation. 
difficult, difficult in a you know in a busy emergency environment. But can we remove that person from the situation, have that conversation? What you don't want is somebody to shout for help in the middle of that conversation. Yeah? Could you just please? Would you? And there ought to be any spectators. So that needs to be a confidential conversation. Needs to be away. Um, who, what, when, where, and how? So we've talked about the methodologies that we might use. What if it doesn't work? What if that conversation doesn't work? What can you do then? So you've given somebody mm -hmm. negative feedback on a really difficult subject, their personality. What if that doesn't work? <coughs> the problem is they may actually feel that it's you against them. Mm -hmm. That's how they perceive this to be. And actually what a better way of doing that is actually do something like a 360 feedback. Because even your friends will tell you the truth. Even your friends are wrong. These are friends, but you are not. Yeah. Or yeah. you are basic. So you get to know actually <coughs> even my friends feel the same about me. And maybe I think it's changed. Because in the end, it's not about how you think you are, it's about how you're perceived by other people. That's not a problem. So not sticking to the same, I'll try, it didn't work, I'll try again, it didn't work, I'll try again, but using other methodologies to bring to and make it whole and really focusing on how other people perceive people. Fantastic. Thank you. Gentlemen at the back. Those that uh, deal with the uh, way feedback, you probably have a heads up about them before you start. So I get them to do their own 360, so I understand where they're coming from about their performance, because quite often, they're knocking themselves a bit better than they think they are. And equally, sometimes their opinion of themselves is somewhat Trump like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. One of, the, um, one of the most oddest and awkwardest pieces of um, verbal feedback I ever needed to give someone was this person just doesn't look happy. So, what they're doing, fine. What they're saying, it's fine. But when it's fine and not good is, they've got a face, I'm trying to think of it without a swear, they've got a face that looks like a bulldog chewing a wasp. Would that be a, a fair thing? Yeah. So whatever they're doing, they don't look like they're enjoying it at all. They really look like they don't want to be here. And the team are feeling that, the team are feeling that this person isn't happy in their work. We keep asking. How do you feel about that? Are you enjoying your job? And all the comments that are coming back are fine, and this person just doesn't seem to be. Will you speak to them? So I spoke to this lady and I said, you're getting some fair feedback. Fair on your practice, but not great. And the reason you're not getting great feedback, so I'm being specific here, yeah? The reason you're not getting great feedback is you really don't look like you're enjoying yourself. Is there something wrong? Now the reaction I got from that lady was classic. My mother has always said this. My mother hated Christmas because my face says what? And she spent ages in effort going towards Christmas, trying to make things special. And even on holidays, I still look like this. <laughs> it's my face and I can't change it. And we had that conversation in the wider team. And my God, she flourished. They got her. And that is a personality you can get and you can run with. Yeah? Because her actions were caring. What she did was caring. But she isn't going to be able to change her face. But that has been that It has been explored. And we've fed forward. We've moved with that. And how we've fed forward is she's now totally aware that she has a face that doesn't always look like it's enjoying work. So she tells people that. She purposely tells them. You know, if she has a new mentor, somebody else, or if she's working and supporting somebody else. If I really look angry with you, people often say that to me, but I will tell you if I'm angry, it's just my face. Yeah? So we have something tangible to be able to move forward. Okay. I'm about, I think I'm about to turn two o'clock in here. I just have a vibration going up on me. <laughs> okay, from the room, are there any points before I wrap up that you wanted to make? Okay. Go and 
give you a personal example. I am a uh, female nurse and I very often, um, not very often, but I, I give feedback to um, senior medics that are male. And there was a particular situation where we had, on a generic instructor course, um, a, a very sexist um, male in the room. Uh, a stu uh, somebody learning to be an ALS instructor. And when I say sexist, I've never seen such extreme sexism in somebody's teaching style. So if I had this, this group here, I was only talking, the gentleman was only talking to the men in the room. The women never got a comment, never got a comment at all. And uh, also in breaks, and you tend to find people with huge ism, <coughs> at breaks that person was often on their own, but if they did speak to anyone, it was only ever uh, another gentleman that they spoke to. There was no, I'm trying not to look at you three, there was no <laughs> eye contact, there was nothing, there was absolutely nothing there. Now the quality of the teaching he gave to these two, spot on, absolutely great, and my goodness I can see why he was nominated as an instructor on that course. And if he had been in a whole male group, I don't think I would have noticed that. But I had to tell him that he'd not passed the course despite ticking every box, because we can do that, can't we? We can tick boxes. He ticked every box for performance, and there isn't a box that says, actually, are you really sexist to the people that you're not looking at? <laughs> yeah, there isn't a box for that. So his non-verbal communication with, with peers, oh, nobody would have wanted to work with that gentleman in a teaching situation. Nobody would have wanted it. So I had to go and tell him, and, oof, my belly doubled over. You know, and thinking, how the hell am I going to do this? So strategies where, well, I've got, I've got a, a quieter room to go in, but also a room where somebody could see me. I didn't go on my own, and unfortunately, unfortunately in this day and age, but I did take a male doctor with me. The feedback went like this. Okay, so as you know, you've ticked every box in this book. But what I want to say to you is that, that colleagues in the room have fed back about your interpersonal skills. And they've noticed that you're not communicating with women the same as you are men. That's a hugely difficult dynamic that we cannot have on any of our instructor courses. And therefore, I am afraid to say, you're going to have to fail on this course, and I wouldn't want you to redo it again. His feedback back to me was, I know, I know, <coughs> and I've been working on this. I've been working on this. It's the way I've always been. I can control this when I am not stressed. But standing up and teaching and being assessed on it, I am stressed. I really respect you for saying this to me. Thank you very much. And goodbye. But it worked. You know, you think I'm going to be here all night, and it wasn't. But again, specific and realistically, how could he have argued back? Now, if he had argued back, what I've got in my, as I call it, my challenge Annika belt that goes around my brain of tools that I would pull out the bag in, in an emergency. i got in there lots and lots of examples, blatant examples that I could use. Specific, timely examples. Wasn't going to tell him anything about three weeks ago, it was all about today. Yeah, so it was all fresh in the mind, tangible examples. Does that make sense? I haven't got all the answers whatsoever. All I'm saying is that honesty and giving that feedback is far more important than not receiving any feedback. As a person giving feedback, never worry, never worry that somebody saw you do something wrong, so who are you to give them feedback? It's a discussion. It's two-way. As, as the lady very at the front very kindly shared, there's often a lot more going off with people that you'll be able to support them through. So I imagine that when your supervisor received that news, they were able to work through with you. But if people don't know, they don't know what they don't know. And please always give people honest feedback. Thank you very much.